Hello everyone and welcome to Connected with Latham, where we discuss ideas, legal developments and business trends shaping the global economy. My name is David Walker and I'm a private equity partner in the London office of Latham. In this episode, we're going to discuss the increasingly complex UK regulatory landscape for consumer-facing companies, as multiple regulators turn their focus to consumer rights and protections. With a raft of new legislation set to impact businesses, private equity sponsors will need to navigate very carefully the heightened enforcement and censure risks, including the possibility of fines, public sanctions and consumer redress. So to discuss how private equity sponsors can navigate these upcoming reforms, I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague from the London office, Becky Critchley. Becky is a counsel in our regulatory team and advises a range of financial institutions on UK financial services regulation, particularly relating to consumer protection, structured finance transactions and benchmarking regulation. Her very deep understanding of the regulatory and market landscapes, as well as her trusted relationships with industry bodies, will undoubtedly come in handy as we get to grips with this transforming UK regulatory landscape. So welcome to the podcast, Becky. Thank you, David. Pleasure to be here. So let's start with the new consumer duty regime. The Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, is refining its focus and reviewing how to enhance consumer protection and has introduced this new regime to improve how consumer-facing financial firms serve their customers. Could you just uh, tell our listeners a little bit about this re- regime and, and what the FCA is hoping to achieve with it? Yes, of course. So the consumer duty is a really interesting piece of uh, a package, really, of new pieces of regulation. Uh, the primary aim of them being to introduce a new principle based regime where the FCA says it will be an outcomes based regulator rather than a rules compliance based regulator. The consumer duty will come into effect from the 31st of July this year, and it essentially introduces higher standards of customer care across the financial services sector where they face retail customers. And it's essentially designed to ensure that financial services firms put their customers first. And this would include regulated private equity sponsors and their financial services portfolio companies. At a very high level, the regime will require all regulated businesses that have some form of interaction with retail customers or act to deliver good outcomes for those customers. And that requires a fundamental mind shift for most businesses. So it applies to firms who are directly facing uh, retail customers. So for example, consumer credit lenders, mortgage lenders, financial services, advisory firms, or those who provide financial products to, to retail. But it also applies to UK regulated entities where they don't directly face retail customers, but where they can determine or materially influence retail customer outcomes. Okay, so let, let's look at that in a bit more detail, because I think there are two questions that I expect private equity firms will be asking themselves. And one is, how do they work out whether this consumer duty applies to them? And then, if it does, how difficult will it be to comply with the regime? Uh, So it's a great question. So for private equity firms themselves, it will only apply if they're regulated by the FCA. um, And then it will be really fact specific after that. And it requires consideration of whether there is a regulated entity in the sort of PE group structure with um, a financial services company further downstream. And then whether that private equity sponsor retains any rights or has any rights to do things in relation to that company, which means they can exercise a material influence over those outcomes for the retail consumers. And that could include, for example, things like the private equity sponsor having investor veto rights over things like interest rate changes, which are very topical at the moment, having a right, for example, to require an interest rate change over the types of products and services offered, so requiring a new type of product or service to be offered to the market, over the types of customers that are targeted, and so, for example, over collections activity. And compliance is really difficult because it really does depend on what rights the private equity sponsor will have in that sort of scenario and how it will exercise them. And then it's really difficult to to think about how they then have to act to demonstrate how they are delivering good consumer outcomes. 
but somewhat helpfully, there is scope to comply with the rules on a proportionate and reasonable basis based on the role that firm plays. And it's always going to be helpful for a private equity sponsor where it's regulated and where it has this material influence that further downstream there is a regulated business that directly faces the consumer. And so also interestingly, there is another change where regulated firms will be obliged to report other firms' failings to the FCA where they note them. And that's sort of you know, policing your peers. It's quite interesting. That's the first time you've seen a direct obligation here. And so that's something to bear in mind when we're thinking about what we know about our own structures as well and perhaps non-compliance of, of those portfolio companies further downstream. And so the application of the consumer duty to individual portfolio structures and regulated private equity entities is probably going to be complex and require some thinking through, and particularly what material influence looks like. And so then even if a private equity sponsor isn't in scope themselves, so they're not regulated or they don't have material influence, it's also worth them checking in with their regulated portfolio companies which have retail business to ask questions around their own implementation of the consumer duty to help flag any issues now of non-compliance in order to manage um, the risks that that kind of non-compliance with this new regime might bring. Yes, I think that point you make on the regulated portfolio companies is very important, clearly. So beyond the consumer duty, the UK has introduced a host of other changes designed to reform consumer-facing businesses. Could you walk us through what these reforms entail and how they'll shape the regulatory landscape? Yes, of course. So the first piece is around the, the wholesale regulation of the consumer credit regime in the UK. Uh, and we don't quite know what that will look like yet. It's part of the broader package of financial services reforms under the Edinburgh reforms, which is essentially here focused on modernising the existing consumer credit legislation, which is difficult, it's disparate. Some of it dates back to the 1970s. Some of it comes from different pieces of UK and EU law. And looking at whether that remains fit for purpose, and also that that um, offers m as n enough consumer protection in a lending context. We've already seen the reform of the buy now, pay later lending market. So we have a reform on the table whereby third party lenders will have to be regulated by the FCA in the, perhaps the next two years. Again, timing is uncertain, but that looks like the right timeline. And this comes amid criticism of that particular sector's approach to affordability assessments and mounting consumer debt in that area. Uh, and regulation here will impact revenue of those firms. So, for example, if PE sponsors have a buy now, pay later lender um, within their portfolio, they might want to look at the the approach of that lender to upcoming reg regulation. It'll impact revenue in terms of implementation costs and then increased ongoing regulatory compliance costs. And we know that some buy now, pay later lenders are looking to exit the market because all of those costs are too great for them. There are also some other reforms announced in relation to additional powers to the Competition and Markets Authority to investigate, enforce and impose fines. These are sort of the biggest legislative changes that we've seen in this area in relation to the, the CMA uh, in more than a decade. And fines that they can impose may go up to something like 10% of annual global turnover for consumer protection breaches. And we're expecting some additional detail on what that will look like later this year. Thanks, Becky. So listening to all that, I've got two questions for you. One is... How do you think that PE firms should view this wave of regulatory change? And the other link question is, what aspects of a sponsor's portfolio do you think are particularly susceptible to risk under these proposed reforms? Again, two some really good questions. And this is a new wave of change which is linked back to the FCA's outcomes-based change in regulation where it's looking at the outcomes that consumers are getting and a changing regulatory environment, also coming amid a greater consumer understanding and awareness of their own rights and how to exercise them. And we often sort of refer to it as the social media or Twitter risk, um, where it's a new and real risk to consumer-facing businesses where consumers actually understand for the first time in a long time their rights under things like the Consumer Rights Act in relation to unfair terms and practices. They then alert other customers to these non-compliance risks via social media platforms, and that can often spread really quickly 
So they're picked up by hundreds of other people in similar circumstances, and that increases the risk of adverse publicity of those particular companies and those particular issues. And we can see there the potential for increased mass compensation claims, which we're already seeing by some of the claims management companies. And so with all of that in mind, sponsors really should carefully review their existing portfolios and their potential future deal targets to assess all of the risks around regulatory change, consumer exposure, and look at how things like profitability, regulatory compliance risk, the type of services offered, um, and the focus of those consumer-facing companies uh, might be impacted by all of this new regulation. Absolutely. I mean, it really does seem that PE deal teams need to pay close attention to these upcoming reforms you know, as regulators continue to focus very much on consumers. Thanks so much, Becky, for illuminating this issue for us and providing us with the benefit of your enormous expertise. Oh, my pleasure, David. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode in our Connected with Latham podcast series. You can subscribe and listen to new and archived episodes of Latham's podcasts on LW.com, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or indeed, wherever else you get your podcasts. And if you'd like more information about this topic in particular, please email us from the links located in the show description, and we'd be happy to respond. We very much hope that you'll tune in for our next podcast in this series. This podcast is provided as a service of Latham & Watkins LLP. Listening to this podcast does not create an attorney-client relationship between you and Latham & Watkins LLP, and you should not send confidential information to Latham & Watkins LLP. While we make every effort to assure that the content of this podcast is accurate, comprehensive, and current, we do not warrant or guarantee any of those things. And you may not rely on this podcast as a substitute for legal research and or consulting a qualified attorney. Listening to this podcast is not a substitute for engaging a lawyer to advise you on your individual needs. Should you require legal advice on the issues covered in this podcast, please consult a qualified attorney. Under New York's Code of Professional Responsibility, portions of this communication contain attorney advertising. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. Results depend upon a variety of factors unique to each representation. Please direct all inquiries regarding the conduct of Latham & Watkins attorneys under the New York's disciplinary rules to Latham & Watkins, LLP, 1271 Avenue of the Americas, New York, New York, 10020, phone number 1212-906-1200.